Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is, uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. Welcome to Streamline Frontend Development with Pattern Lab and Twig. Uh, we have the slides, and it'll also be on the last slide. So we'll start off with the introduction. Uh, who am I? It's actually, um, who are we? Uh, I originally did this session in New Orleans with uh, my colleague Chaz Chumley, who unfortunately could not uh, hop across the pond. Um, so, uh, but a little about us. We both work for uh, Forum One, which is based in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. We work uh, largely with uh, nonprofits and NGOs. Uh, basically, our motto is if the company does good in the world, the agency does good in the world, then we want to work with them. Um, I'm a senior front end developer, and Chaz is a technical architect and a Drupal evangelist. And uh, we both have kind of fun, interesting, uh, not quite hobbies, but extracurriculars. He's a DJ and I sing opera. Who was at the uh, pre-note? Who got your butts in the pre-note? Yeah, thank you for showing up. That was fun. Uh, and I also uh, am a student of Kung Fu. And uh, I've been doing Drupal since about 2009 and web development in general since 1998. Uh, I've done everything from logos to database schemas and uh, worked with some really big clients. Uh, Oxfam is a project I did recently. Um, we did a facelift on their uh, internet uh, while it was live, kind of like open heart surgery. Um, so a little more about Forum One. It's a, we're a full service uh, digital agency that crafts solutions for the world's most influential organizations. Here's a smattering of our clients. Um, and let's just uh, get to the heart of the matter of the agenda. So we're going to talk about the gist of what are we talking about with this streamlined front-end development, um, what tools are we using, uh, how we're going to put tools together, what's our recipe. I'm going to give you a demo. Uh, it's very simple, but it's a proof of concept. Um, and then we'll open the floor to questions, and I imagine there might be a few. So. Never bolt your door with a boiled carrot. This is an Irish proverb, and um, not exactly on topic, but uh, nonetheless, solid advice. So let's give you a little history. So back uh, at DrupalCon in LA a few years ago, I had a question. If Drupal 8 used Twig templates and the new Pattern Lab used Twig templates, could they be the same Twig templates? For those of you who have used Pattern Lab before, you probably know that the original version used mustache templates. Um, and there's been this version, it's been available for about a year, year and a half now, that it also uses Twig. Now, they're not, it's not quite the same uh, how it's put together in Pattern Lab versus how Drupal 8 uses them, but there are some similarities. And there are ways to uh, using a uh, Pattern Lab Twig starter kit for a theme that you can begin to parallel the two uh, and create mappings so that atoms in Pattern Lab, and we'll get to component-based design and atomic design if, you haven't, if you're not with me here, but atoms map to fields, molecules to view modes, organisms to views, oh, excuse me, and so on. So what are the ramifications of this approach? Well, First, front-enders, we can take full control of the markup. Who has worked uh, so far in Drupal 8 with the, all right. So that you know that you're in, in using Twig, we don't have to deal with uh, display suite or views or panelize or clean markup to really get control of the markup. We can do it all in the templates. Whether or not you choose to do it that way or you put it in configuration, that is a whole other issue which we will not be dealing with today. What's also great about Pattern Lab is that it can be used as a version that the client can see, uh, a version of the website that the client can see b really before, and they can see and improve. You can demonstrate responsiveness, uh, and this can happen all before uh, development actually even begins. Um, later on, we'll give you a little brief demo of Pattern Lab in action uh, in that way. Who, uh, who's used, who, year, who here has used Pattern Lab? All right, so that's good, a good chunk of you. So in theory, we can build a site out in Pattern Lab 
theoretically, before development has even started. And then you can install your theme in D8. And then presto changeo, the site's already themed. So that's the gist. It's fun, right? So it's not a delay to stop and sharpen the scythe. And apparently scythe icons are very difficult to come by, so we have a wrench. So let's take a look at the tools we're going to be using. Many of you have used any and all of these. We have Twig, we have Drupal 8, we have Pattern Lab. So let's go back. So has everyone in the room touched Drupal 8 so far? Yeah? And therefore, and how many of you are front-enders? Let's get a, actually a feel. Front-enders, back-enders, site builders, project managers, full stack, I do everything, including take out the garbage. <laughs> yes, all right. So, and then um, Pattern Lab, maybe the, those of you who have used Pattern Lab is like the, is the smallest, gr smallest group. So, I'm probably being incredibly redundant here, but Twig, fast, secure, flexible templating engine from Sensio Labs, the people who brought us Symfony, Drupal 8, which we, as we know, adopted Twig as its uh, templating language to more clearly separate presentation and content layers, and Pattern Lab, which is defined as a s custom static site generator that constructs an interface by stitching atoms, molecules, and organisms together to form templates and pages. What we love about it is, uh, in addition to other things I listed before, is that its uh, philosophy parallels several core tenets of object-oriented programming, uh, don't repeat yourself, and keep it simple, stupid. Those are OOP, DRY, and KISS. So since Pattern Lab is the least well known, we're going to go. Oh, and this is going to be fun if I can figure out how to unmirror, maybe? Is that what I need to do here? If I do this, and I can go back. Oh, God, that's always small for me. Here, sweep. Pattern Lab. Can you all see this? So this is the Pattern Lab, which we did for forum1.com, which is in Drupal 8, and we launched it earlier this year. I'm going to give you a rundown of what we have here. So this is the all page. This is what it defaults to. And we have, I'm just going to scroll for a little bit, and then I'm going to show you some of the more fun things in Pattern Lab. Um, we have color palette, fonts, headings. This is how you can go ahead. It's, it kind of, at this point, looks just like a style guide. Block quote, but it, going further down, I'm just gonna, you can get dates. You can do image tiles, image formats, and then start to put those together into article byline. You can do teasers. You can do, like, literally every element of your website can be pattern labbed and then put together. And I'm going to show you how that works. So over here, we're looking at all base. Uh, you can, like I was talking about, team image. This is what the team image is not there. That's fun. There we go. There's an image. But th that's, not as, that's not interesting, just like yeah, what can we give up? intro. A little bit of text, also not interesting. But when you put atoms together, and you can look at what's a sample, you can start to put view modes together, right? That's the uh, event hero. You have an event teaser. We got, we call them postcards. That's not showing up for some reason. Oh, it's aha. It's fancy. This is book. This is all on panel. This has all been themed. And now we can go, just to give you some context, this is the actual Forum 1 website. And we go, for example, to events, and you can look at the event teaser. Let's go back to the event teaser. Aside from the fact that you don't have the margin over here, that's exactly what it looked like. 
this was done first before there was any Drupal install, before there was any data, this got done. And one of the, you can do all sorts of fun things. We can, I really can't see this small. Don't get old people, it's terrible. It's annotated, keyboard shortcuts page. That's not what I want, I want the code. <laughs> code, there it is. So down here we now, if you can see that low, this is actually the markup. That's the markup that was created and this shouldn't say bad because this was this was actually done in the version, no, the ver with the mustache. This was actually done before th we started using the other one. In any case, what's also fun about Pattern Lab is you can test responsiveness. Let's go back to actually to page, to pick a page. You can actually play around, make sure everything works well and responsively. This can all happen outside of Drupal, right? Questions about Pattern Lab? Yes, sir. Is this for the, uh, searches or applications? Or no, this is, this is op PatternLab.io. That's where it lives. It's free. What, what is it? Is it a shop? Or it's a, basically a templating engine that you can set up to mimic the markup of a Drupal site, or any site, really, okay. to help practice component-based design. Yeah. The code that uh, was it was only generated or you have to pick up the Uh you you l I will demonstrate I'll show you how the, what you work with the templates uh, when I do my demo for the streamlined part later. Okay? There's another question back here? Yes sir. Yeah. Yes, I will, I will show you. The, we get to that. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We can get back to presenting. Oh, boy. That's fine. I'll have to go married. Sorry. No? We don't want that part, do we? Sorry, that's, no. Where did you do? Ah, now it's working. Make this fun. I do this wrong. <laughs> nope. I want this one over there. And my presenter view. Oh, for goodness sakes. Sorry. I should have rehearsed this part. Hey, now we're getting somewhere. All right. So many of you and myself have used Pattern Lab in, let's say, Drup Drupal 7, where you parallel in Drupal, uh, but without Twig. Uh, but the catch is that anytime you get a design change, any change you make in Pattern Lab, or in Drupal has to be done in both, right? Uh, and this is fine, it's just you're doing everything twice. In addition, it's harder to keep track of, greater chance of error. In Drupal 7, if you're making this kind of a change, if you were making this kind of a change, you were doing the change in either display suite, if the markup in Drupal, you're changing it in display suite, or panelizer, or any number of places uh, and it's really hard to keep track 
you're practically, practically playing front-end developer and site builder at the same time. Not impossible, but it can get more complicated. But if you think about what, if you think about having Twig in common between Pattern Lab and Drupal, that would be uh, kind of amazing. That would be um, kind of delicious, which is why it brings us to the recipe. Who here is uh, enjoying the uh, Irish food, Irish stew, like my favorite go-to meal, that and Guinness, really good stuff. All right, so, like a fire makes a speedy cup. So what if I told you that Pattern Lab and Drupal can, in fact, share templates that you could theme it once and be done, not repeat yourself, keep it simple, that you can own all the markup. You don't have to negotiate uh, markup with your developers. How many of you have ever had to like sit down with your developer and hash out the markup you wanted in a view mode versus what they were able to give you? You guys are really only just a few of you. It, I have had some stubborn developers. You're lucky. So, or we'll we'll, we'll paraphrase uh, Morpheus over here. You take the blue pill and the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. Or you take the red pill and stay at DrupalCon, and I show you how deep the Twiggy hole goes. So, these are the ingredients that this is what we're working with today. We have a Pattern Lab integrated Drupal 8 theme. Uh, out of the box, there's this uh, gentleman named Alexi Peebles, um, who we owe a great debt to. Uh, most of the work, uh, this session is inspired by his work uh, and indebted to his work. Uh, Form 1 is also, we have our own uh, theme, Gesso, which uh, we're working on updating into this method. Uh, it's not quite ready yet. Other things you need to be comfortable using, NPM and Composer. Bauer used to be involved. Uh, these are all package and dependency managers. Uh, in the, uh, the Shiloh theme uses Gulp as the task runner. At Forum 1 and Gesso, we use Grunt. Lots of battles have been fought over the two. They both do the basically the same thing. They, they uh, run JavaScript tasks in, in order or call on each other and so on, et cetera. They can uh, compile SAS, build out, uh, build out templates, clear the Drupal cache, et cetera. And uh, the piece of magic here, uh, also from Alexi, is this data transform plugin that w the gist of what it does is this. So we're used to, in Twig, we have the dot notation now. It doesn't matter whether it was an object or an array content dot field name dot length or, or however down the chain you want to go, right? Well, in Pattern Lab, there's also a similar setup using JSON, per one JSON file per twig file, such that you can also inject uh, content into your, into your Pattern Lab files to have certain content show up and not necessarily hard code at all in the template. But what this data transform plugin allows for is it allows the pattern lab variables to mimic the twig, the pattern lab twig variables mar ma uh, are a mirror of the Drupal twig variables. So it's the exact same variable names, one pulling in Drupal from PHP into the template, the other pulling from pattern lab and JSON into the twig template. So they can be the same twig template. And so uh, this is the special sauce, and it's like Guinness, but not as delicious. So again, thanks to Alexi, uh, we really this this next generation of uh, streamlined front end development is really, really thanks to him. And that's his blog, and you should visit it. So now it's tea time, and uh, another Irish proverb: life is like a cup of tea; it's all in how you make it. So now we'll take a look at what is possible. And we will unmirror yet again. It's exciting. So. Turns out. One does it. Let's do it again. Okay, so. 
here is a pattern lab of a very, very simple homepage. <coughs> this is a site nav. And this is a pattern for a, a teaser view for speaker, which you can simply see here. Node speaker, and I have an image and another div. It's an H4 and the company name. It is super basic because, like I said before, this is just a proof of concept. And if, uh, oops, I need to switch themes. So I'm going to make Bartik our default. There, out of the box, this is Drupal with, I have speakers with speaker name, company name, and a picture. Let's, how do I get this to stop doing this? I really want, I should not be mirrored. I'm already mirrored. Gather windows, how's that? So <coughs> this is my instance here running on a, a VM uh, to keep things simpler. So streamlined. Is it bigger here? Let's see if I can't. So you want bigger over here as well? Or can, is this legible now? Not quite. No, I know. I'm trying to figure out how to make that bigger as well, but I'm not sure I can. I'm going to describe it as I go. So this is the public folder, public, <coughs> themes, Shyla. This is the folder from the starter kit. Uh, this is basically where uh, Pattern Lab is living. The rest of the theme is normal templates and your normal theme files over here. I'm going to go to patterns, organisms, node. I created a new folder called node dash dash speaker dash dash teaser. And there's a little style that goes with it. This is this is the the new template. This is what's different than the default article teaser or default teaser template. I've already made it different, but this is in, please look here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. This is in themes, Shyla, dist, patterns, O2 dash, organisms, nodes. This is in Pattern Lab. This is a Pattern Lab template, yeah? Here's a JSON, which I'm telling you what classes to have. No title for the title. This is just for the Pattern Lab side. You won't see this on the Drupal side. <laughs> and this, tw you and th one, c this uh, we're extending node speaker teaser.html.twig. That's how Pattern Lab and Drupal get the same, same thing. So back over here. Pattern Lab, right? Let's say you get a request from the client. They want to change the speaker name, which is currently an H4. <laughs> Let's say they want to make it an H3. So. I don't know. There we go. So we're going to go over here. Change it to H3. run gulp. I can show you the gulp file in a little bit. But all it's doing is it's compiling SAS. It's really small, isn't it? I'll make it bigger as well. Where's my one here? Where's my cursor? Basically, 
I compiled SAS, did a PL generate. Now we're going to go back over here. Now it's an H3. Right? But you say, what about Drupal? Well, it's got to go back to terminal. We also have to do cache CR. It's slow, I know. There we go. Go to the Drupal version. And here, you actually won't see any change because this is Bartik and not Shiloh. But no change because this is actually still an H2 like it was in the other kind of template right there. It's an H2 because this is not Shiloh. This is the default teaser you're getting with any theme out of the box. But we're going to go back to appearance. Shiloh, our default. Back to the site. And you can see here, that's an H3. We know it because it's blue. That's how I themed it, right? H3. To make this point, I'm going to go back. Let's say the client changes their mind again, because that never happens. Back to H4, right? So we're going to rerun gulp. Right. We're going to rerun drush. Refresh here. We'll expect it to be an H4 in gray again, and there it is. And the same thing here. And that is what we're talking about. Theming it once and done. Uh, it's not as simple as just taking a theme out of the box. There's definitely some <coughs> setting up to do, and we can. Uh, I can talk briefly about that, but uh, who here sees the power that's possible with this? Yeah. Who is who here is as excited as I am about the possibilities here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> yes, sir. That's fine, but if you have a theme that you do not have a pattern lab instance for, to go ahead to go back, oops, sorry, I keep doing that, to go back and put a, to create a pattern lab instance of an existing site is a lot of work. Um, and not necessarily, I think you might have some trouble convincing a client that there's value in that. Uh, and it depends on if the client understands component-based design and if they're a long-term client and that all of the a lot of factors involved. Sir. So that brings me to my question. Um, so I have a client. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's the structure uh, that Alexi has in his Shiloh theme. Uh, there are several major differences in how we're going to be uh, implementing things with our Gesso theme. Uh, I don't think that you should have, it's one way to keep things organized, uh, to have a per component one, S one SCSS file, one SAS file, and do it that way. In general, we also have 
one SAS file port per component, but we like to keep them separate. So I, me personally, that's not how I would do it, but we're not, the, the Gesso theme isn't as far along in this, in getting it set up for production, uh, so which is why I chose to use the Shiloh theme today. So it's an excellent point, and I don't have a great answer for you, just that it's a choice. Any more questions on that? Yeah. Would you uh, care about using the same or the same theme for a bunch of different jobs or things like that? No, it's not. It's actually it's a it's a starter theme. It's it's really really out of the box. It's incredibly minimal. It doesn't even like the background color. I did. Where is it here? I basically f threw together the the background color up here, and it's. Here, let's actually just, aside from that, I can take you look at some of his other templates, like a page article. It's super, super basic. It's, I put this together just as a, to, to show you what's possible, not to show you how fancy my theming skills are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is, it's a very, very basic theme. Let's, I think. That was a demo, which was awesome. So um, we're coming up to lots more questions. So if you guys have them, but this is uh, these are some links. Uh, you can also uh, the you can take a picture or the link to the uh, slides is available. It'll be on the last slide. But here are some. If you want to get involved in Pattern Lab, want more information about the Shiloh theme, the Gesso theme, and there's a Pattern Lab chat room on gitter.im. So anyone else wants to take a picture? Do that. Give you all a second. Going once. All right. Um, for those of you interested in going to Greece in May, uh, Front End United. Uh, has anyone ever been to a Front End United conference? Yeah. What was that? Uh, I think we had this logo first, but, and also our, ours has a little chunk out of it. it. I'm not the creative brains at Forum One. I just, I just make things look pretty. Someone else makes it, someone else thinks up the pretty stuff and I put it on a website. It's really simple. So, but anyway, yes, that, that is, I guess it is kind of similar. So, but any front, front end United, it is in next May in Greece. Um, it should be great uh, and very warm, and I don't know if I can get there, but uh, I w would love to go because you know Greece. Now, um, now we can go back and are there more questions, sir? I think I think that would totally be possible. I've not done it that way, but y the you know the generic field markup for a Drupal field, not that different. You know, if you have you're extending Drupal, you know, twig uh, Drupal field twig templates, then yeah, you just add an extra class and you could make you know your orange background field or whoever you're you're doing it. And of course you the third time's the charm, Adam. And of course, you could use it from one project to the next because a lot of these, the templates, the markup itself, isn't necessarily changing. It's the, the CSS you're applying and you could choose to do it like uh, Alexi and group them together in a directory and copy it over. I mean, that's, full, that's you're, you're fully capable uh, of, of choosing to do it that way. And I, I don't even, it might even be a great way to do it. I've just not tried it that way. But yeah, that, that is one of the things that's possible is you can really componentize you have the way you choose to use a search bar with you click it and it slides into the animation. Why would you choose to like redo that from scratch every single time? Yeah, sir.
I think that there's different shops deal with the division of labor in different ways. Some sh uh, at Forum One, we have some themers who are not capable of site building. You have some themers who are capable. I also do back end work sometimes. Uh, depends on what a project needs. So, in some shops, choose to keep them separate, to 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 keep the themers out of the site building, and that's one way of doing it. And that's totally. It's possible with Pattern Lab. Uh, it's one of the things that Pattern Lab really helps make easy. The, pa the, the themer can just say, here, I've done it in Pattern Lab. Here's the markup I want. Give it here, the developer. This is where it is in Pattern Lab. Go, make it, you build it. This is the pattern, this is the markup I need. Or you can go and do it all yourself, like I do sometimes. Both are possible. Over there in the blue. Yeah, there has to be communication between the front ender and the back ender about what what are the field names, what are the variables, uh, and if they're going to be doing the making sure that on the Drupal side everything looks right. So there's a this is I don't know if you can't read this. This is forum1.com slash theme slash gesso slash pattern dash lab slash public question mark uh, p equals whatever the pattern is. And you can send them like for the homepage. You just send them this link and they can review it. This is not the live site. This is just Pattern Lab. It's ho it, for us, we place Pattern Lab inside the theme uh, because we want them to share CSS. Uh, but that's a choice also. Sir, I'll get to you next. Yes. So the, the question is, is it a little more time consuming to do things in Pattern Lab first rather than just theme the Drupal site? It is, but the things that allows you to do, the, for example, Pattern Lab loads faster than a Drupal page. You know, it doesn't, you don't, you're not waiting seconds. It's, 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 I mean, I'm just gonna refresh this. And the only hit is the, is the only hit is the image. Whereas, you know, it's, it, what was, A little slower, actually. It's not that slow, but but the point is, yes, uh, it does. It does take a little longer, but you are building out components that can be reused, that already work responsively, uh, that don't have to be tested again once they're used as part of Drupal. Just question back here. So uh, to keep costs down, minimal overhead uh, instance of Pattern Lab, 
That's an excellent question. Um, I'm not sure that that's a the necessarily the best solution for a smaller client. Uh, it, it, you know, if there are certain for, and I don't even I couldn't even come up with a number. I, I could make something up. I don't know, less than fifty thousand, less than a hundred thousand. It wouldn't make sense. It would be too much of a take too much of the project. But yeah, no, it's definitely definitely a, a concern that I'm sure some clients or shops might have. Yes, Tom. <coughs> Um, well, I can't speak for other themes. Gesso uh, was designed by Dan Muyard, who is, if I'm not mistaken, both legally blind and legally deaf. Uh, he is one of the champions of, uh, of a, a, a accessibility, um, and he is brilliant, and it's an honor. One of the things I like about Form 1 is I'm by far not the smartest person at this company. He's, he's one of my, uh, he's the head of the front-end development uh, and he's 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 super knowledgeable and yeah so Gesso, our version is completely accessible, like hundred percent. The all it to, it's totally capable of supporting. Pattern Lab can support any theme, you know. Um, it's just, it's a tool that you can. We took Gesso and we put it in a Pattern Lab for Drupal. We have Gesso for WordPress. It uses Pattern Lab too. The, the, the three are, it's kind of like a, a triangle. That, that they don't necessarily all lean on each other, but they, they do support each other. Question, sir. The data transform plugin isn't providing the variables. It's pulling the variables from the JSON file that is associated with the Twig template and pulling them in to Pattern Lab, just like so that the template is the same as the Drupal one, which is getting its variables from PHP from Symfony. So it's the, the it's the uh, basically the here. Let me show you again that JSON file. Yeah, so this is field speaker image, and I just hard coded it here. In Pattern Lab, you could easily just create, just as easily create another component and call it to be pull in here. I was just trying to save myself time, but this is field speaker image. This is field company, and here we have content dot field speaker image and content dot field company. Yes. No, you're not using them in Drupal. You're just using them, you're using the variables that you're from JSON to display in Pattern Lab so that you have dummy data to show, which, which would lower MIP some text or, or whatever to, because if you, oops, I don't need to open Viber. Nice, Adam. Because if, no, I wanted that. Because if you look, page because if you look here this is all dummy text this is all speaker name company name this is the same image this is the same teaser pattern lab component four times yeah no no you could pull in you can yeah, th this example I chose not to do that just to keep it simpler for me. But yeah, you, c you can totally, that is basically what Pattern Lab does. Let me close. Just to give you, I can, I'm really blind. Speaker listing, the speaker listing just to, it's pulling in my organisms node speaker teaser four times. That's why it's showing up four times. If I took the one of these out, it would show three times. That's just how Pattern Lab works. If I put an extra one in there, it would show four times, five times. 
question. Yes. Yes. Is that your Postgres? Uh, it's actually so it's it's Drupal's using the same file because of that extra. So here is the .html .twig, which both, which uh, which is what Drupal is using, and this, which extends it, is what Twig is using. But it's basically saying. Use the same one, so you're only you only have ch making the change once. You're making the change here. I guess my question is, how does Drupal know about the Postgres template? Because uh, Drupal can Drupal can find any Twig template inside your theme directory, because that's what Drupal does. Just searches it, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes, actually, that I I was about to go. There is a way to. Is it no? That's the. I had it up before. Um, Drupal components. I have not yet gotten to play much with this component libraries, but this is something else, uh, which basically it kind of does the opposite. It allows you to pull Drupal actual content in Drupal into Pattern Lab using um, uh, Twig namespaces, and I don't I do not. Ah, like I said, I don't completely understand how this one works. I've not used it yet, but apparently it pulls the data from Pattern Lab and pulls it into Drupal. Um, this is definitely, uh, Chaz uh, brought this to my attention last week. I've not had time to uh, fully digest it, but it, it, it looks very promising. And it's entirely possible that the way, what I've demonstrated today won't be the way that Forum 1 does it. Maybe we'll use component libraries. We're going to find the best solution that allows us to theme it once and be done. In the back? I'm very familiar with them. They're doing very similar work as well. Yes. They're really the, they're the same. There's one instance of the template. Uh, and whether you do it one way or the other, I don't know which way is ultimately the best way. I think they both have strengths. I know that my supervisor, one of the things he really likes about the way we're doing it now is that doing theming something in Pattern Lab only, like a uh, gentleman over here was, was mentioning, you don't need to actually have any real Drupal knowledge. You can really just be a, fr a front end on your own, and depending on what your team is like, that might be a good solution. If you're doing everything, maybe you want. Poor Adam, really? I gotta step step back. If 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 you do, if you are a full stack developer, maybe you want to have the control. Maybe you want to be pulling the Drupal stuff into Pattern Lab or vice versa. But when you have junior developers who are just wrapping their heads around Pattern Lab, and that's how we do things with Forum 1, the junior developer maybe needs to be not confused by anything Drupal. So they can just, they have the design, they have Pattern Lab, and they're going to build it out. They're going to say to the developer, here's the Pattern Lab, here's the markup we need, please go make that happen. It really, it just, it really depends on your team. It's never, I don't think it could ever be completely cut, cut and dry. Uh, it's going to depend on who you have on your team, what their skill sets are, et cetera. Sir. Um, I don't know. I would assume, I don't see why not. You might have to have a separate instance for each theme. It would depend on how you architect it. I, I just, I, off the top of my head, I, I don't know. Yes, sir. Ah.
So using, you're saying, I'm just repeating this so I understand. So using this, this phase two, it's the component libraries or it's something else? Uh, only their starter kit. So it's actually using their starter kit is keeps Pattern Lab separate and the Drupal templates pull in yeah. the pattern. Interesting. Yes. You can actually do this, do, do that same thing here. You, I didn't do it in this particular case, but you can extend, you can use. Hmm. Yeah, you could, no, but you could also break it down that way. You could have just content and then pull in, there's ways in JSON to, to pull in con into your content variable lots of different things, just not how I chose to do it. Just because I wanted to demonstrate some custom markup, which sometimes, because if you're not doing the, the markup changes in your Twig template, where are you doing them? If you're just trying to pull in variables, that's one thing, but if you're actually trying to do some sort of special markup, which is what the power of Twig is, then where do you do that now? I mean, do you do it in, where do you change the markup? Where do you, what if you need to have a special class on a div? Yes, yes you can. interesting you should write a session on it <laughs> I'd go I'll go I'll attend cool. Ooh, we're out of time. yeah got it I don't completely follow that but I've been up since 5.30, so we'll have to have another conversation. <laughs> Any more questions before we uh, close it out and I just say thank you? All right, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Last slide. <laughs> I'm just gonna, can we go back to present? Present, there you go. Um, boom, so down here, the slides, if you wanna take a look, and also the link to the eval. Um, so thank you all, and I hope you all enjoyed DrupalCon. Thank you. <laughs>